Hey guys, how's it going? Um, back at you with a quick video um, for this evening uh, about average rate of change. So we know rate of change is very similar, or is slope, right? But we know with curved lines, the, the rate of change is different throughout, right? So we talk about derivatives being an instantaneous rate of change. We can also look at average rate of change over an interval, right? And Here's how average rate of change is defined. Average rate of change. Of a function f on an interval a to b equals That is our average rate of change formula. So again, writing it as a formula. Again, average, I'll use ROC for rate of change of F on an interval AB equals F of B minus F of A over B minus A. That's a formula that we're going to want to memorize. Now, if you notice, that is just simply the slope equation. It's change in y over change in x. So it's just the slope that connects the two endpoints. Looking at this graphically, it might look like this. So let's say here's my graph. I've got A here and B out here. This is the point A comma F of A. This is the point B comma F of B. So let's say that those two are connected. Let's make it a curve. So we have a, I don't know, let's go something like this. There are lots of different instantaneous rates of change there between A and B. Right, right away, just to the right of A, it's very steep. Then it flattens out and almost goes negative there in the middle. It gets steep again. Well, the average of all of those rates of change is just the slope of the line that connects A comma F of A with B comma F of B. So this slope, this line right here is the slope of that line is F of B minus F of A, right? Change in Y f of b minus f of a over change in x, b minus a. Okay, and that slope is the average rate of change. Of f. Okay. So, the average rate of change, if we have a graph, right, we can just do the slope of that connects the two endpoints. Okay. We can do this from a table or we can do it from a from a function let me give you a, a quick table and function <laughs> okay. so let's say f of x equals 2x squared plus 5 Find the average rate of change of F on the interval 1, 4. We want the average rate of change of F on the interval 1, 4. Okay? We know this is our function F of X. We know this is our interval, right? I want you to think of the 1 is like A and the 4 is like B. So, my average rate of change of F of F on the interval 1, 4 has to equal F of B, so F of 4 minus F of 1 over 4 minus 1, right? 
This is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Well, f of 4, how do I calculate that? Well, I just have to plug it into this formula right here. 4 squared is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. 32 plus 5 is 37. Okay, minus f of 1 would be 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. 2 plus 5 is 7. So it would be 37 minus 7 over 4 minus 1, which is 3. So this would be 30 over 3, which equals 10. So the average rate of change would be 10. Okay, table form for example 2. x, f of x, So if I ask you, find the average rate of change of f on the interval 0 to 18. Okay. Again, 0 is like a, 18 is like b. So my average rate of change of f on that interval 0 to 18 would be f of b, so this is going to equal f of 18 minus f of a, so minus f of 0 over 18 minus 0. Well, f of 18, I can read the table here, f of 18 is 30 minus f of 0, zero is, f of 0 is negative 6, so it's 30 minus negative 6, so I'm going to actually add them there over 18 minus 0, which is 18. I get 36 over 18, which equals 2. So my average rate of change is 2. I don't even have to know what else is going on in the middle there. I know my average rate of change of f on the interval 0 to 18 equals 2. All right, just a short one for today, um, but a very important one. Average rate of change comes up quite a bit on the AP exam, and we just have to remember that formula, f of v minus f of a over b minus a. All right, we'll practice that more, plus we'll practice what we practiced today in class on Friday. Talk to you guys later. Bye.